So my name is Jane Gertz. I've been a friend of uh, Rick Burns for a gazillion years and uh, he's been a good colleague of mine in the design studio at NBCCD. So I have a fun story. Rick used to come into the classroom all the time to talk to the students. And uh, one day we were just talking. He said, well, you haven't been to my studio on the north side of Fredericton. So I said, okay, I'll come over and we'll talk shop. We'll talk about design. So when I went over, uh, we were looking at some of his paintings and I said, well, how do you ever figure out what name you're going to give a piece? And he said to me, well, he said, let's take this one piece. And he, he sort of gave me a, a small image and it had a broad red stripe on it and two black lines that were really kind of squiggly. And I said, okay, what's the title of this one? And he said, Jack Returns Home, 1945. And I said, oh, I said, well, where do you go with that? And he said, it allows the viewer to take the story. So he said, where would you go? And I said, well, there's no picture of Jack in there, so you've got to assume that this is a story about Jack returning home after the Second World War. He goes, yeah, that's a good start. And I said, well, maybe Jack was injured. Big, bold red line. Maybe he got hurt. And the other line sort of means that maybe somebody else went with him. But it wasn't an easy journey because these lines were all kind of all squiggled. And there was this big, bold red line. And he said, yeah, it sort of takes the viewer into their own imagination. And it becomes sort of a whimsical way of looking at art that they don't really understand. There's not Jack in a World War II uniform coming home. There's a red line and two black lines. So it allows the viewer to go a lot further with the name. The name and the story sort of coincide, but there's no one telling you the story. You're kind of making it up yourself, even though there are those things in the image that will lead you to that place. So I always thought that was such a wonderful story on how to make a title and give the imagination and the visuals and the understanding to the viewer rather than the artist making everything so crystal clear, you know, so that you don't have a lot of room to create imagination. And most of Rick's work had this wonderful ephemeral moments in it. They're sort of whispers of ideas. And if you look at his work, they're very ethereal and whispering. So there's a gentleness to it and a harshness to it. So it gives the viewer some idea that something is there that you've got to connect with and the rest of it you have to use your mind and your imagination to fill the rest of the image in. And once you have the story and the title, it'll take you there. And the other thing he said is, man, most of the time I just don't want to name them. <laughs>